Okay, very kind, uh, good morning, um, and welcome back to kind of the other topic. I realize it's a bit uh, different in various ways, it's uh, more experimentally oriented, and it's very much uh, talking about um, uh, interacting quantum spin systems and magnetism, so I think it's a little, uh, a little bit of a break from your um, many-body localization talks. Um, so I'm going to pick up uh, where I left yesterday essentially and I, um, I've got a couple of things that I didn't quite finish that I'll try to, to um, talk to you about. Um, first I wanted to update this reference. Um, this is actually quite a nice series of lectures about um, scattering techniques covering everything um, uh, e e everything that's sort of active I would say in, in um, quantum condensed matter physics and neutron scattering. Um, so that, that's, a, I think, a 30 lecture series or something, if, you, if you'd like uh, more of this kind of um, information. Um, but the, the topic for today is uh, quantum magnetism in insulating solids. Um, so the, the basis will be that we have uh, spin degrees of freedom in the material, sometimes also orbital degrees of freedom. Uh, but we have, um, we're thinking about systems where the charge degrees of freedom have been integrated out, so we have really just uh, the individual atoms that carry the, uh, carry the magnetism. And then there will be some sort of exchange interactions between these, uh, giving rise to the collective magnetic properties. Um, now I've put quantum in front of magnetism because we want to emphasize the situations in which um, the formation of singlets uh, overrides the overall tendency that you might otherwise have towards the formation of a long-range ordered magnetic state. Um, since we're talking about insulators, and in insulators mostly the magnetic interactions end up being antiferromagnetic, um, then we will be thinking about systems that rather than going into a long-range ordered antiferromagnetic state actually um, become dominated by the formation of singlets. Um, so the, the general kind of scheme that we'll picture that will be helpful for us to have in mind uh, is that if we think about, just for starters, the very simple situation of um, two uh, spin one half degrees of freedom that uh, interact in some way with each other, uh, if that interaction is an isotropic interaction, as, as, as is this term here, uh, well then I'm going to be able to classify the, um, the eigenstates in terms of the total angular momentum of that spin pair and it can take two values which is 0 and 1 um, and correspondingly this situation uh, where the triplet lies lowest would correspond to a, uh, to a ferromagnetic <coughs> interaction and this situation is what, which is what we will concentrate on today is where the um, interaction is one that favors the formation of a singlet um, now the singlet is an isotropic um, entity and so it's not going to give rise to um, elastic magnetic scattering. Uh, it, it essentially doesn't, have, doesn't carry any angular momentum so I end up not being able to scatter elastically my neutrons. Uh, but because I have in the materials these um, constituent spin half degrees of freedom I can suddenly make an inelastic excitation which uh, lifts the state of the spin pair into the triplet and causes a massive water leak. <laughs> wow. Uh -oh. oh, that doesn't look good at all. That's it. Yeah, that's not good. I'm trying to find one. Okay. I think it's. I'm 
This is several of the lecture halls have this going on, um, and the custodians have been called. And it's, I don't know what it is, but it's some pretty severe water leak somewhere. Um, I, uh, it doesn't seem to be local to this area back here, it's just uh, all over the place. 